Okay, so here's the second part of the exam. Uh, I'm actually not going to go over all of it because I, I think the first part A and B are pretty straightforward of, of number six. So we're just going to go over the ones that I think uh, merits a little more explanation. So let me expand this window right here. And Okay, so 6A is pretty simple. We've done that a lot of times. You can use different type of methods. And the method I'm using right here is, is a marginal utility method. So you can look that up later on, but I don't think many of you will have any problems with that. Um, the quantity of P that maximizes utility for Jerry is 5, and the, the quantity of C is 22.5. In the second problem, we're going to do the same thing again, but this time we're going to use a price of uh, P of 20 instead of 10. So essentially we're doing everything, but we're changing uh, this part right here, right? So instead of being one half, now it's one, and then changing the, uh, this part right here was one half before, and now it's one, and then we solve again. Um, we, uh, Jerry's going to cut consumption of P by 2.5, so consumption of P is going to be 2.5 now, and then consumption of C doesn't change, it stays, stays at 22.5. Now the second part, the third part here is actually the the more difficult one. I thought I'm gonna spend, uh, I'm gonna go over this one uh, in detail. Uh, I got I got started right here. Uh, now we we already know the the total effect, and that was the the change in consumption uh, when the price of P goes up, and the change in consumption was exactly 2.5, right? That was um, in part A he was consuming five. In part B, when the price of P went down, he's consuming 2.5. So he changed, he reduced the consumption of P by 2.5. This should really be a negative because the price went up, so it's a it's a reduction in consumption. Okay, now how do we find the substitution and income effect? So uh, like we said in class, uh, essentially what there's two there's two reasons why Jerry costs consumption. One is because um, P is actually cheaper now. Uh, it's more expensive now, so he's gonna um, C becomes relatively cheaper, and he's gonna take some consumption that he was using for P before, some money that he was using for for P, and he's allocating that he's gonna allocate that money to C because C is relatively cheaper, so he's gonna substitute P for C. That's the substitution effect. Now the other reason he's gonna cut consumption of P is because it's gonna take more money to buy P. So es essentially, it's like people are someone's putting money in the pocket of Jerry and taking money out of his pocket because it takes more money to buy the same amount of. Uh, bundled up before. So since, since the uh, uh, income effect is lower, since uh, the effective income of Jerry is actually lower, Jerry is, gonna is also going to cut consumption of P because of that. So to separate this effect, what we do is that we're going to play a trick. We're going to give Jerry the income back. It's as if we were, if we were going to give him the income back, how much P and C would Jerry buy with the new price of P? Uh, to be as happy as he was, Originally, so we're going to bring him back to the original utility curve with the new price of P, which is 20. So what are our variables here? We know that U1 is going to be uh, the equal to the U we have in part one. So we know the values of P uh, and all the values of C in part one. That's five and 22.5, and we know the utility equation is to the power of nine, so we can find that value. We also know that form of that utility function is still going to be P times C to the power of nine. And furthermore, we also know that if Jerry maximizes, he's going to use the MU, uh, MUP over MUC, the ratio of the marginal utility is equal to the ratio of the prices, which is the equation we had found on part B. So this comes from, this comes from MU, um, MUP over MUC is equal to PP over PC. Right? So that's where this equation comes from, which is still the same as in part B. So using these three equations, we can actually find the values of P and C, right? So first what we do is we take that C value and we replace it in here, right? So now we know that U is equal to P. Um, instead of C, we're going to replace that. So it's 9P to the power of 9. So uh, we raise the 9 to the power of 9, and we multiply the P's. So what we end up here is U equals P. Um, to the power of 10. And 9 to the power of 9. And then if we want to separate this in here. And uh, now we want to solve for P, so we're going to um, basically divide by 9 to the power of 9 first. So we know that um, P to the power of 10 is going to be equal to U 
divided by 9 to the power of 9. And we want to uh, solve for the p. What we do is we replay, we raise everything to the one half. So basically, p is going to be equal to u divided by 9 to the power of 9. All of that raised to the power of 1 half. And now we, we now at this point in, the, in our calculator, we can take that u, which we already found, and replace that u for um, for that this this right here, and perform this whole operation in our calculators. So when we do that, what we end up with is p is equal to uh, twenty. Uh, what is it? Two point seven. And this is what we call that's the third p, right? So we're going to call that. Well, we're not changing it, but this this is a new p that we found. This is a, this is a, the amount. After you give Jerry the income back, he's still going to consume a lot less uh, units of P, 2.7. So what we know, and this cannot be because of income, it has to be simply because of substitution. So Jerry consumes, so there's three P's that Jerry consume, right? P1 is when the price of P is equal to, uh, to 10, and he consumes 5. P2 is when the price of... Um, when the price of P increases to 20, he consumes 2.5. And P3 is when the income is given back to him, uh, and he still consumes 2.7. So he caught consumption due to substitution, right? So substitution effect, he caught consumption by 5 minus 2.7. Right? He caught consumption by 5 minus 2.7, um, which is 2.3. So that's our substitution effect. And since we know the total effect is 2.5, and 2.3 was substitution, when the rest have to be the income effect, so it's 0 0.2. And all of these values are negative in this case because all of them uh, means lower consumption. So that is the, uh, the answer to this, uh, this part of the problem. And I think, uh, let me see how much time I have here in the, in the video because I think it's probably better to do the other Probably better. I'm gonna do part um, part D in a separate video so that I can actually uh, print all these things. I'm sorry, uh, number seven. Part D, I'm gonna post in a, as a separate diagram. Um, so we're gonna do. I'm gonna do another video for part uh, for question number seven.